Yes, people, welcome back to Ben and Pearson Fitness. Welcome to another video. We are at JD. We are about to go and hit up a full body, high rock specific strength session with my online client, Ethan, who was competing in Glasgow in March. It's his first ever high rocks. He's from a football background. It's the first time I met him, to be fair. Um, so fair play to him letting me film um, today and get some content. We're going to walk through a full body strength session. He's just finished. He's on the last week of his base building blocks. So it's a lot of um, zone two aerobic running. He's building his strength up. He's already got a very good strength base. I think he's actually stronger than me, to be fair, on like upper body stuff. Um, and just to let you know, I have done a high rock session this morning. It was pretty much a full sim with a little bit of rest in between. So if I'm if I get out benched, you know why. Uh, but he's a big lad, strong lad. Looking forward to training with him. And like I said, he's 13 weeks out, 12 weeks as of uh, next Saturday. It's actually Friday the beforehand. So uh, 13, 12, 13 weeks out. Um, so let's jump into the session. Thought it'd be interesting to get mic'd up. And I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way. Let's jump in with the session with you. Right, well, I finally found someone who's about my height. Marcus, mate, you've been replaced by a better looking and taller guy. Um, but yeah, yes, people, welcome back to Brendan Pearson Fitness with my client, Ethan, who's got High Rocks Glasgow. And I think, I think I said 13, 12 weeks, 12, 13 weeks. Yeah, not 12 weeks. We've just finished, we're, we're kind of finished the base building phase, which I mentioned before. And um, this is going to be the last your last session actually because you've you're not got football tomorrow do you no i'll have to set you something to do tomorrow then yeah. so, but anyway last session of the base building phase then we go into our 12 week intensification block we're gonna work some strengths some front squats or back squats probably for you bench press single arm rows and then we've got some station work so we've got the back sorry the front end of a high rocks gonna check your technique on the ski egg, so no pressure we we'll do a 1k ski egg for time yeah we're gonna pretty, i'm gonna have a go at it as well i think we'll, we'll see how we get and we'll compare each other um sled push sled pull and burpees. We'll run through techniques. Obviously, you're doing the open weights, and you're yeah, a big, yeah. strong lad. So your technique for the open weights is going to be a little bit different on the sled pull, especially. Uh, and then I'll kind of run through some tips on the sled uh, pull for the for the pros as well. Going to film the session. Going to test even out. He's going to beat me on bench press, probably. Well, well you got 100 that. kg in you for bench press. 110. 110. I think I've benched 110 once in my life. <laughs> especially now, I'm not. I'm doing all this high because I'm skinny. But yeah, we're just going to uh, jump into the session. See what uh, see what we can do and get cracking. Well, Let's go, mate. Right, single leg deadlifts. Right, we'll literally use that and see what your balance is like. Because I've had you've had what you rolled your ankles a few times. Yeah. You've so won about four times in football career. It's all football. Football's horrendous. I've had an ankle surgery, so it's just working on balance and stability, getting the hamstrings and glutes firing. We're running and, and high rock stuff. It's a lot of quad dominant stuff. So your quads are getting a lot of work and not your hamstrings. So we'll work through that. Which is your worst side? For ankle. Just in general. Yeah, for balance, would you say? Uh, me left. Left one, right. We'll do left leg first then. So just start off with, we'll not even pick the weight up. Stand on your left leg. See what your balance is like. And then I literally just want you to come down, try and keep, obviously keep a flat back and try and use it a good RDL technique. So pushing the hips back, keeping the back flat, come down, tap. And then I want a little knee drive at the top. Right. So we're just going to do 10. Oh my God, my balance has went there. And then drive up your knee. Oh. See, see if you can do 10 in a row, right? I'm going to try and concentrate now. Bit of ankle stability, especially for people who have injured ankles. Especially for runners, and especially for like high rock athletes, when you're doing lun when you're doing like the walking lunges, having some single leg stability definitely helps. I haven't done these in a while now. You'll probably feel your glutes starting to kick in at some point as well. <laughs> that glutes fired now, right? Yeah. I'm gonna alternate your your plan one week on session like strength session A or B. These, and then we'll do like an isometric hamstring exercise the second session as well. So at the minute I've been putting the hamstring curls in. Yeah, single leg. We'll probably get away with them for now, but then now the running volume will go up a bit more. We'll just do an isometric because you'll. I always find when my running volume goes up, I just cramp every time I do that. Right. Like a single leg hamstring curl. Right, same on the other side. Yeah, I normally do these without your shoes as well because sometimes some shoes provide a lot of stability, and too many people get used to wearing shoes the whole time, and the foot actually becomes quite weak, especially running shoes, which are sometimes quite narrow. Right, have a try with the weight. Am I almost right. sitting down in the hip? So when I go back, like sitting down to the side slightly. So try and keep your hips 
square on. What square a lot of people on. do when they go into a single de deadlift is they end up yeah, opening yeah. the hips up. Right. Try and keep things parallel. And then also what I try and think about is with this leg, try and kick a little bit higher. That'll cool. just get the hamstring stretched off a little bit more. A lot of people, when you do ones like, like keeping the leg down, sorry, they end up arching the back. Right. So this, I always sometimes tell people, imagine you've got a pull from the top of your head all the way down to that heel and everything's moving at the same time. If the stick starts to bend or the pole starts to bend, it'll snap. But try not to let that happen. Yeah. Have a try. Let's get hard now. <laughs> Is your hammy tight? Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. hammy. Back in my knee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pop a teal sort of um, in your gastronemia sort of area. That'll yeah. probably tighten up. I'll get. I'll grab a little weight as well. I used to hammer these back in the day when I was playing uh, playing football. But it doesn't just get you that you that your big glute muscles, it gets like the little tiny ones, like your medius and your minimus, that help, like, help with a lot of stability. And then you can obviously make it harder by adding weight, or mainly for you, it's probably more like making this, the flow unstable. So adding like a mat or like a ball suit ball underneath your foot. Right, yeah. That'll make it a lot, I used to do these on a ball suit, it used to be horrendous. <laughs> right, because we're both hard, well, we're both got knackered ankles again. Um, a lot of time when people roll their ankle, they get like a little bit of like a talus bone blockage, so it limits your dorsiflexion, your ability to drive the knees over your toes. And to be fair, because you're a bigger lad as well, you'll probably struggle like myself with wall balls with keeping that chest up. So if you struggle with wall balls and you feel yourself falling over, try this one. Ugh. So which side is it that you're blocked up on again? Left. We'll do this one after. We'll do it on your left first. So slide it right in that joint. Probably kick that forward a bit more. I normally like, do a few circles so the band's like right locked into my ankle where that talus bone kind of gets blocked. Then just swing forward. And then you're almost in like a split squat position and push forward. You've done this one before, haven't you? Yeah. Or something yeah. similar. Just drive that knee forward. Have a little play around because you might be tighter. Like for me, I can feel it more. I'm tight on the inside and just lean into it. And just be careful that your foot doesn't curl in too much because that's what your foot will naturally do anyway when you've got that blockage. So try and like almost push the weight to the outside of your foot. I'll let you do it on your uh, do it on your block side. That feel tight. It's also a good stretch for the other hip. Yeah. Can you feel that like still blocked up there? Why? Oh, if it doesn't feel like the band's getting in the right area, I sometimes do a little calf raise and then it kind of like pops it, and then try and push your heel down, and really put a bit of weight on that knee. Oh. Feel tight. <laughs> what we'll try because you've never done front squats before. Do front squats as a warm up. Right. Before we do back squats, just because it'll help you keep upright. Have you done front squats? Like even like cross body front squats before? So you can't. Not since I was like 16. Well, we might try it just for a day. Um, so, front squat position, obviously, make sure the bar is set up just below chest height. I can get myself into a position where I can get my hands under. A lot of people can't just because of mobility. But what I normally do, I do like a prisoner or a zombie squat, I took before it before right. I start. So, literally step underneath the bar. This mic's going to get in the way, yeah. Arms out in front, you should be able to hold the bar in position without actually holding on to anything. So get yourself in the squat stance, we'll have a look at your technique and then just drop in and just do 10 squats. You can like keep pushing your hands up as high as you can, but just head up, arms up and just get used to that position. Oh, I did 120 wall balls this morning, so my legs are a bit, <laughs> bit tender today. Sorry. Have a try of that, it might literally feel like you want to Top all over. Yeah, this is about a fall over on camera. So arms straight out in front if you can. Yep. Get as far so it's kind of resting on your neck a little bit. Tight, arms nice and yeah. high. That's it. Does it feel like it's going to fall? So to start off with, just re just do that. Just sit in position. Keep those elbows high. Right. right, step back a little bit. Right, let's have a look. It's going to feel like it's going to want to top all over. Yeah. Right, when you're ready. Yes, you see how it wants to. Straight so, away. Really push those elbows as high as you can. Right. Your first movement, try and sink back into your heels just a little bit more. Good. That's it. Back into your heels, back into your heels. Good. That's better. That's better. I can see how tight those angles are. Aye. Breaking in, like when the foot comes in a little bit, that's fine for now, just because you are a little bit all right. Yeah, we're gonna, I want to work on these because these will help with your wall balls a lot. See that side from inside. Right, pause there. Now have your arms arms in front. Straight, you've got it in you. Right, just keep your head up and push those hands up as high as you can. 
Because if you're dead, it's going to roll. Yeah. It's massive shoulders, mate. Uh, man. Right. Let's go on. Come back yeah. up. That's it. Rack it a second. Yeah, that's just something to practice. Like, for your walk, obviously, we'll do back squats today. Right. Because I can see from the side view that the bar path's kind of coming that way. It's right. just, I think there's a lot of the time it's those ankles are tight, but yeah. get practicing that. Even just start with a goblet squat and like film yourself. Am I like starting to lean forward when I get into it? Right. Side note with warm ups, don't kill yourself in warm ups because people are like full on do right. If you're building up to three sets of 10 or something, they'll do 10 reps at the bar, 10 reps at 20, 10 reps at 40 kilos, um, and then just keep on going up in tens. Literally, I would go bar for like 10 to 15. If you see you build up to 100, bar for 10 to 15. Go to, if you, can, if you feel fine, go to 60, probably do six to eight. Then that last set of 80 kilos, probably like two, two to four. So see, as long as you feel warmed up enough. Uh, see how we get on. My quads are gonna cramp up today, I can already tell. I'm clipping it like. Are oh, you sensible? Is this, this is a professional PT. <laughs> I just don't put clips on. PT, that kind of squad. <laughs> you know, Hands. Yes. What's your... I don't really say it is the closer you can get you can in, the more stable. But it depends on people's shoulder mobility. Like, that's why a lot of people can't back squat is because the shoulder mobility is so right. restricted. Do whatever feels comfortable. Hundred kegs. Nice, strong. Another thing I will say is, high rock shoes aren't great for squatting. Right. They're uh, not, but I had this conversation with someone the other day because it, it was at that seminar and I said like, oh, like, if, you don't, if you're wearing like wooden shoes, don't squat on them. My argument was, I'm a high, if you're a high rocks athlete, you're born in high rocks. Yeah. These are what you're gonna treat like, racing, so get used to like, squatting uh, in them. Um, wall balls at the end, isn't it? Exactly, get and also, I'd say if you're someone who's got carbon fiber plates in your shoes, probably don't wear them for squatting. Right. But if you've got these, yeah, like, than the other for you, you probably benefit there. from wearing a squat shoe because your ankle mobility. Uh, but then yeah. it's an incentive to, for you to work on your squat mobility. Should I try a hundred? I'm not going to be able to do this summer. Easy, come on. Need a Level. Oh, fucking hell. Come on, you. Hey, okay. what? No, you can put some more weight on, actually. You're joking. <laughs> you've done 100, you've done three sets of this before, haven't you? Three sets? Have you done three sets of 100? I've done three sets, but I was like dying. You're with me now, <laughs> you just made me do 100 after all, buddy. <laughs> Let's go, lad. Come on. Drive off. Good. Come on. Come on. Drive. Come on, you. Let's go. Let's go. Good lad. There it is. Big PR. Fuck me. Don't you? Come on. You see, you naturally do your um, staggered stance, don't you, for rows? See, I've changed my. So I normally go that, so yeah, I try and almost get into like feet underneath my hips, knees slightly, slightly bent. Really, right. I, I just think it's a most more athletic, um, athletic stance, so bring right. your feet a little bit closer in, so it's get not that. too much weight on your shoulder. That's right. about right. And then try and get that lap firing as much as you can, good. And then what I sometimes do, because the dumbbell sometimes gets in the way, depending, I sometimes rotate my palm in slightly. Right. <sighs> that's it, especially with bodybuilding stuff. You can feel that's rock solid fire in there. Do you feel that like, yeah, you're quite, quite switched on with that. The way you're saying about you, you feel like you'd struggle with your grip. Yeah. On fit. See, I think I only really, really train farmers. I mean, I did them this morning, but I only really train them four weeks out from a competition. Because your grip has quite a quick response, but it also loses it quite a bit. So it only really needs a couple of weeks to get into it. But right. loads of rowing, loads of heavy deadlifts with no straps. RDLs. I have stopped using straps completely now. Just take them out because you're a big lad, mate. You'll be able to do it. It's just practice. Yeah. Being able to single arm dumbbell row the way that you are going to lift for a farmer's carry for like 10 reps if you can, like three sets of 10. Um, as long as you can do that, 
But yeah, loads of rowing, skiing, loads of assault bike for like, because I do assault bike for 90 minutes. I try and keep my hands on the, yeah. the handles for as much as I can. Um, I think it, screw, it messes with us a bit because I do it after rows as well. So, so that's, grip, mate, when you're doing a race, I always crop, like, no matter how recovered I am, when I'm doing a, like, an actual race, uh -huh. the last two times I've started cramping up. I think it's just adrenaline and everything. Obviously, yeah. your heart rate's higher, you're sweating a bit more. I, like, my forearms are cramping up on the row, and I'm like, shit, I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> but also, on the day, you can get some chalk as well. But um, I'm going to go 75. 75. But yeah, we'll fly through this, go back to back. Yeah. I've seen before the Ethan, I've started going because I'm specifically training for Hyrox now. My bench press is literally like a full grip bench press rather than a wide one. Just because a baby bro jump, you're not really going to be pushing back up that wide. I keep mine pretty much all up apart. Whereas if you're more bodybuilding specific or like strength training, you want to go a little bit wider to so lift as much weight as possible. It's eight in it again. Yeah. Oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, then I'll always start my week around. Whenever I do yeah. like single, I always start my week around with that. One thing I say as well on your rows, if you feel yourself starting to rotate, almost open your chest up to the opposite direction a little bit. Like when I had a bodybuilding coach, he was like big on that, more for like lining your elbow up with your lat and stuff like that. So if you feel yourself rotating when you're rowing, just start with your chest slightly to the side. And if you do rotate, you'll rotate at the center, if that makes sense. Uh see what I've got in it for a kit. <laughs> the best, the best kit is 309. So we'll see how tired I am. And we'll, you'll do okay. We'll just go for it. Right. Obviously, your pace on here of a 1K one out effort isn't going to be a high rock pace. Like my average pace for a 1k on here will be per 500 meters, like a 1 minute 34 to 35. Yeah. In a high rocks, it's like a 145 to 150 ish. Um, your damper setting for an open, whenever it comes to our train, I think it's set on six in open. I know it's seven on pros. Right. But you don't want it too high. The higher that you have that damper setting, the more it's going to fatigue your muscles, you're going to burn out more. Right. The lower down it is, the more strokes per minute you'll be able to get because the resistance is lighter but the less distance you'll cover. Does that make sense? Is that like more aerobic then? Yeah, so like it's kind higher. of like, right. like for example, Hunter McIntyre, who's like the number one high yeah. rock. So he normally has his on five for most things. Oh, cool. Like it's getting that happy medium. So if you had it on 10, per stroke, you'd cover bigger amount of distance. You'd burn more calories if you're doing calories, but you'll burn out quicker. Your muscles are fatigued and you'll yeah. just, for a 1K, you'll not be able to. Have it on one, you'll never be able to get enough, like powering enough strokes to cover enough distance. So, I normally just, what, to be fair, normally on a race, whatever it's left on, I just run in and jump on and just, it's normally set to six. Um, first thing, the setup. Your first few pulls, obviously, you are going to be running at the station. Yeah. What a lot of people do, they stand still and they try and do a, a big, long pull to get it going. Right. The most efficient thing to do is what a lot of the top pros do. They kind of have, because you'll be on like the box platform sort of skis, if you know what I mean. I normally go in, one foot on, one, two, three, and I'm in. Like that. Right. It's a lot more, it's kind of like a bit of a dance sort of thing, isn't it? Five, six, seven, eight. But it's just getting that momentum, lunging into it, because the first few strokes, there's a little bit of like resistance from getting the fan belt going. Um, have a try that sort of thing. Literally just imagine you're running in, come in, one, two, three. And then almost with each stroke, you're going like a quarter, a half, and then a full one. Right. If that makes sense. This is where I run in, I'll miss the handles and just miss start, it. <laughs> start running at it. <laughs> flat for forward. But yeah, have a, uh, have a try. Come on, no pressure. 1k run into a ski. One, two, and you're in. That's it. It's bottom. So that's, that's the start set up. Yeah. Obviously, don't go all the blazing in a, in a high rock, so if yeah. you'll want to. You generally, you'll just run the first key, like, fucking, I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rip it up and you'll be fucked afterwards. Yeah. Um, but technique wise, because you're a taller lad, what I normally do, you know how the handles come down on the, you've used the one with a, um, with a platform that that's... you can like, drag around. Sort yeah, of thing, yeah. yeah. I normally go, because you're a bit tall, about the same as me, my toes are kind of in line with uh, where the thing goes down. Smaller people can probably step yeah. in a little bit. 
too many people go too close. I don't know if you've had clients in the past, they go on a ski and they're doing this, trying to avoid the, uh, the step back a little bit. Um, but yeah, I normally go, just imagine like an RDL position, like feet hit width apart, and then you're in that position. And what you want to think about is pulling. You're almost really only pulling to this point. The momentum should take you past your knees. Too many people pull all the way down and waste a lot of energy. So it's just kind of pulling down past your knees and trying not to squat into it too much. So just everyone have their own technique. So it's just pull down past your knees, stand up tall in between every motion and then pull back down. Right. So if I get my race pace, which is about there. And I'm almost thinking about sinking back into my heels as I pull down. Almost again like an RDL sort of position, pulling down. What I'm not doing is I'm not leaning forward, which a lot of people do, and I'm not squatting into it. And I'm also, like I said, making sure that I stand up in between every rep to get, get some air in. Otherwise, you'll probably end up hurting your back a bit because you're constantly in that bent over position rather than standing tall. 1K for time. My prediction is three minutes. Oh, I don't know, actually, That's I might have 37. I had 37. Well, 337. It's my prediction. quick, you know. Three, two, one, go. Let's go. That's it. Hold that like 147. That's it. Keep using that height. Stand tall. Stand tall. Time. Three by three point five. Oh my. Oh my. So you've got to do that. You've got to do that and then run seven k and do it for seven other stations. It's tough, like it's tough. Horrible. Horrible. It's only fair. I'll smash one out. I'll... Give <laughs> I'm not like fucked, I'm just yeah. nothing else. It's all right. Right, so sled push. One thing that's annoying for you is the sleds are going to change in the new year. Right. They change brands. So I don't know what they're going to be like. They'll probably be a little bit wider than these JD ones. So you start position here. You'll probably be able to rest your shoulders on there. There's a few different techniques you can do with a sled. Uh, some people do the kind of, um, have you seen the people that kind of, they're in this sort of position? Yeah, yeah. We can't do them on these sleds because it's too narrow. Aye. So they actually come in, in like, in that sort of position, which is a bit too narrow for us. That just gets your body weight over. I've never done that technique. I, need to, I want to practice it, but it's just these sleds you can't. Yeah. In terms of obviously doing the 50 meters, so it'll be 25, 25, 25, 25. You might be able to do the whole thing without resting. Right. Because you're a strong lad, but it might like set you back in the run. So when it, yeah. if you ever come to do a pro, you'll probably have to break it up. Um, like Hunter McIntyre, he's got a rule every 10 steps he rests. Yeah. Unless it feels really good. Um, in terms of setup position, make sure that you're not starting too high. Because then your line of force is going up rather than across, which is what we want. We don't want the sled starting to lift because there's too much weight on the front. So just get your head down. Nice, the nice thing at the minute with the sleds, which again, they're gonna change in the new year. You're, you're a little bit smaller than me, so you're like, in terms of height, but the middle bit that sticks out, I can actually rest my head perfectly on the middle bit. Yeah. So I almost ram it with my head, which is like ideal, but again, the new sleds might be different. So we're just gonna to have to see what it's like on the day, but for these sleds, I would just grab, probably like halfway down your femurs, I'd probably say. Right. It's probably where you wanna be, but you'll naturally find your position. Step in, head nice and low, keep your head down, and then just drive. That's not too heavy. <laughs> you say that? That might be. So yeah, when it comes to your gym, every sled's going to be different. So the track here is quite smooth. So I have to load this up probably like 75 kilos heavier than what it is on a high rock stay. So this is 200 kilos. And then the sled on top of it, you are doing 152 plus the sled. Um, we'll just see what you like. Big steps, little steps. Or is it just little, I would you, say little, little. little consistent steps. Right. Don't overstride it. Just do one length and we'll see what you like. That's it. Stay nice and low. That's not too bad. Three, two, one, go. Nice shoe all the way. 
Come on, keep driving, keep driving. Come on, keep going on. Take a break, take a break if you need it, if you need it, five seconds. Two, one, back in, come on. Let's go. So get your breather here. Maybe inhale, fuck it now. <laughs> come on, last one. 12 and a half meters and we're done. Yes, you get across that line. Come on, keep going. <laughs> nice. 230 on the dot, mate. Heavy on the legs. Chest is dead. Yeah. It's a lot more, a lot more cardio than you think. All right, let's have a crack. <sighs> oh. oh, my calves. Oh, good. I had some water. Yeah. 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 yeah if, you, if your gym doesn't have proper ropes, you're just going to have to double knot it. And even at JD, they have this rope with like material around. It's not ideal, but it's all you can do. But definitely, he's dead. Double knot it because Ethan went on his ass trying to do these. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst thing about high rocks trainers, like setting sleds up. Like you do a full simulation and you'd like to reset this up for all of like three minutes of like a, a bloody. Yeah. 70 minute workout. <laughs> but you can just use a TRX like if you if you need to. Right. Sled pull technique for the open because the weights are a little bit uh, lighter. Your technique will be a little bit different. In the pro, what you'll have to do is if you ever come to do one, come down, reach as far as you can forward, step back, and then lean into it and walk back. But the weights are a little bit lighter in the open. So what you'll be able to do, say this is your box. Obviously for today, we'll have to drag it all the way back to the end first because it's not long enough. Right. In the actual race, you'll only have a box like this big to work in. Don't know how exactly how big it is, but most important thing is making sure you don't trip over the rope. So getting that out of the way. What I've done in the past for open is get to the front of the box, come down, and I'm almost pulling and walking back at the same time. You see some big lads who literally just sit there and we can just do that. Yeah. You can try that technique, but I don't know. It depends on what the sleds are like on the day. Sometimes they might be heavy, sometimes they might not. But I just go for the safest bet. Run to the front of the box, grab, pull, and then I pull back at the same time. Chuck it between my legs, come forward, reach, pull, come between my legs, step forward, pull, chuck it between my legs. That's kind of what I do. Um, obviously, just manage your rope quite well as well. But I've never actually tried the... that you can do that but i think it's just more efficient to save your hole because that'll just tax you quite a lot yeah um but we can try different techniques again this rope obviously slides a bit so it's a little bit better. we'll have a practice from that end and see how you get on you'll be running from like to say that direction yeah you'll come into here there is chalk but you might not need it i don't really think people need it right. um, and like i said i'll go i'll step over which is far forward as you can take the tension out of the rope first right then grab it for this particular rope because obviously it's got the slidey thing you kind of have to like pull it back it's kind of like a very inappropriate gesture <laughs> you know what i mean but just because of this one reach as far as you can and then you start going into like your pull you step back but i'll imagine it's it's loose for you so my, right, so see if my, my feet are here am i okay reaching over that line yeah you can reach over the line that's fine right. it's just your feet can't go over that line they can't go over that line either right right have a try just have a try this is a practice run that's it. That's you have to lean back into it. It's quite heavy. There you go. Then throw the rope between your legs. Nice. And then every so often you might have to swipe that bit of rope away at it with your leg. Nice, mate. And then get it across that line. And then you just got to get it across that line to finish. So that line there, you need oh, to get it past. Yeah, yeah, all the way. So that's what you'd have to do, yeah. What we'll do for the first one, you'll have to... Um, you'll just have to grab it, walk all the way back to the end. Like all the way, like keep going. Yeah. We'll go to here and then you're in. But I try it. Oh, 
fucking hell. You see how I resorted to the other technique then? Yeah. Oh. Alright, lad, I'll time you. Two, one, go. That's a step all the way back to start with. That's it. If it's really heavy, just go for the step back technique. Nice, you get it across that line. As you can, just go back into it. Good, pull, 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 walk back. Good lad. That's it. That's it. Get your little breather in between. Step back and pull. Just use that step. This is heavy, by the way. This is definitely heavier than your weights. Good. Might as well train this way, though. That's it. Push and drive. Good, good, good. Let's go. Let's go. Pull, pull, pull. Walk it back. Good. Drop it there. Nice. You've got your room now. As soon as that sled gets closer to you, it gets easier. When it's further away from you, it's much harder. As I keep going, two more pulls, keep walking it back, and then finish it off one little pull. Get the right rope, do one. Go on. Time. Just in the five That's minutes. Mean. That's mean. That's heavier than the uh, thing you want. Do you not notice that the further away the sled was, the harder it is to yeah. pull, and then you get closer, it gets easier. It's that first pull that like kills people. But um, if the sleds are heavy, try. Um, it's probably more efficient to keep a hold of the rope when you're doing that step back technique. So once you've right. took the tension out of the rope, yeah. you see a lot of the top pros, they'll walk it back, they'll throw the rope to the side. If you can get into that sort of rhythm, you're walking yeah. it forward. That's probably more efficient than dropping it and then having to bend all the way down. Yeah, yeah. It's just, with the open weights, I think you're probably better just pulling it, chucking it and then pulling it again. That's heavy. Technique on burpees, especially when you're doing a solo one, it's different doing a doubles, you can fly for it. Right. On a solo one, first thing, when you start, your hands are gotta be behind the line. They're quite picky on that, so don't start with your hands there. Make sure you're behind. Um, I'd probably recommend for most people doing like a sort of step up technique, so you'll probably be okay. Hands down, kick your feet back, make sure that chest goes to the floor, and then you wanna swing one leg back. You see how I kinda like, almost like hop one leg in? Then the other leg follows. Right. Some people, what a lot of people do once they kind of get further down, they'll end up cheating, they'll do this, and they'll step forward. Like loads of people are getting pulled for that now, they're getting a bit straight, they're on a sword this. <laughs> Chest down, step. I would always go with my foot in line with my hand so I don't get penalized. And then stay low, then jump. Stay nice and low to the ground, then hands down. And same again. And then you jump in. If you feel really good at them, some people are, you can go hands down, jump, and then jump straight in. That's what like, like I don't know how people do it, but it's very, it's like very- a psychopath. It's, yeah, pretty much. Um, but I would go hands down, jump down, step, then jump. If you start getting really, really, really tired, you're, like, you're low, low on energy, go hands down, step back, step forward, then jump. That's just a little bit more energy reserve, but obviously not as quick. Have a little try and see what feels best for you. Come on, so hands down. Do one more. Nice, rest there. For you, I'd say, you were struggling to get your hand, like feet in line with your hands. Yeah. So you were kind of going down, going to there. Yeah. That's yeah. just hip mobility. Yeah. That's yeah. why I always throw, you know, the greatest stretch. Yeah. Like working on that sort of mobility, that'll really help that because if you've got tight hips, you'll really struggle. And I even feel, just I working feel on like. I like, stretch forward, I feel tight. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the baby's always going to be like quite tough. So it's just working on that ability to get your foot in that position. Yeah. And you might have to change your technique to the point where you're coming up a little bit onto your knee, doing that and then jumping. Right. You yeah. just don't get that much forward momentum doing that. You're almost like. You break your momentum. Yeah. So, but if you can do it, so it's bam. You're almost already leaning into your next one. Right, we'll do a stint of, you do 20, I'll do 20, and we'll just do that twice. When you go down, your hands, don't go too far in front as well. Right. Make sure they're- From where my feet go. <laughs> you can get away with a little bit, but it's when people do this, they'll go down and they'll go, I. And it'll gain yeah, a bit of like, it too, yeah. triggers me so much that, that, but yeah. Nice.
I also find as well, I always have a tendency to put my right foot go first, my right hip's more mobile. Right. So in a race, I always go with my right foot first, but in training, I try and alternate, just so I get a bit of practice with it. Yeah. I think we're both fucked now, aren't we? I'm yeah. dead. Done in. Let's wrap the session up. Mate, we can both sneak in here. Oh, um, but yeah, that was a long session. Realistically, like, we don't really need to spend two hours in a gym like that. And obviously, running through High Rocks technique when the exercise is on its own, it's a completely different ball game to when you come to do it when you're running. Like, your technique's probably going to slow down. You're going to have to try and find the most efficient technique for you. Like, we were going all out on the ski, on the sled push, the sled pull there. Like, your technique's going to be different. It's just literally, for your first high rocks, I would say, to anybody doing the first high rocks, is just go out there and experience it. You'll not really know what you're running into. You can do simulations and training, and it might be completely different to when you get out there on the day. Um, but yeah, you said it was a humbling experience. Yeah. It's, some, yeah. it's just different sort of intensity. Um, when, you rocks. when you're training by yourself, it's completely different. Oh, I know. It's always, I would say if anybody, if you've never done a high rocks before, train with someone who has done a high rocks and it does push you a lot more. Um, we'll have to get a, a session in, like doing an actual high rock session together. Oh. That would be good fun. Just say, like, <laughs> train with someone, do a doubles workout together. Just so one work, one rest, you can work technique a little bit more because you get that little bit of rest in between. Um, and obviously just, if you're doing a solo one, you're going to have to throw some simulations in there just to get used to what it's like. Doing a 1K run, going into some sled pushes, then having to run again. Um, but I, that's just a little bit of a, a taste of what training looks like 13 weeks out. Obviously the session was a lot longer than intended. I'm very hungry, I've got to go back to work. You, <laughs> you, you need some calories. I had some carbs during the you had nothing. Yeah, yeah, I'm starving now. But yeah, right, we're gonna get some food. Uh, shout out to Ethan, by the way, give him a little follow on Instagram, I'll put him down below. Was it Ethan Chat Fitness? Ethan Chat Fit. Ethan Chat Fit, yeah. there we go. I'll put it in the description down below. He's gonna get loads of content out soon. He's gonna be YouTubing, podcast. Yep. Everything. I'm gonna get on his case, but I'm looking forward to seeing him in Glasgow. Um, and yeah, come support her. Come support her if you're in Glasgow anyway. Smart me. Good session that. Cheers. Good session. There we go, a little outro.